Hello, my name's Bill. This is Six Rounds Studio. Today we're back on the 1905 Ithaca. Over the last several days, we've been polishing the receiver and we've pretty much got it done. I've been soaking it in uh, grease lightning for the last, last, I don't know, four or five days. And you can see all the gunk that's coming out of this, um, this receiver. Uh, a lot of dirt, 117 years of dirt and grime. Uh, so it's coming out, it's coming out in this really sludgy kind of stuff. So as soon as I'm finished cleaning it, we're pretty much ready to put the color on. And the color is what I want to talk about today. When these Ithacas left the factory um, all the way back in 1905, they were typically color case uh, hardened and that color case would leave that typical um, textures of colors, the, the, the blues, the coppers, the, uh, the orange, uh, and this one was no exception. Uh, every, every Ithaca that I have seen from that period, they all have the color case, and they all, uh, they all fade in various, various degrees. Now, that 1925 that I've got is it has a lot of its color case remaining. So I'm going to be able to use that as an example as to how to get how to get this um, this receiver so that it has that nice color case look to it. So I mentioned in an earlier video that that I didn't want to put this receiver back through the color case coloring process. Uh, it's an old piece of steel and I know for for certain that because of the value of this gun, which is not all that high uh, as a, in the collecting world, very high in the in the family's legacy, I didn't want to didn't want to spend their money trying to do a complete color case. But when I was doing some research, um, I found this this guy out of Utah that that does this faux finish, this faux color case. And it's really, it's a chemical process, just like bluing. I mean, you literally, you, you polish it, you put this chemical on, and um, you're able to, to use the various chemicals in a way that allows the, re, the resulting finish to, to be like, um, like the, the coloring on color case finishing. So I uh, did some research, went to the guy's website, looked at a bunch of videos, and I'm going to tell you what, if this works, if I can get this to look like real color case finishing, uh, this is a whole new opportunity for me to offer services to, to other, to other um, clients uh, where we're, we're simulating this color case finish and we're not putting it through the, through the, um, the heating process that requires that to be done. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I don't mean it that way, but certainly we can do this chemical coloring uh, in a way that is um, is less expensive and hopefully just as nice looking um, as as the regular regular finish. I don't want to talk about who this guy is until I've done some testing. Uh, if this turns out the way I really want it to. Uh, trust me, I'm going to talk this guy up, uh, but I want to get through the testing the testing first. Um, interesting fact, um, Ruger Firearms, the early Vaqueros, they were a, they were a chemical coloring. They, we, Ruger did not send these to um, anybody who did actual, actual heat, heat treating or color case heat treating uh, to get those colors. This was Ruger's early Vaqueros were a, were a chemical coloring, just like I'm proposing to do here. It was done a little bit differently than this, but, but this idea of a full color case finish isn't, isn't unique or new. Um, factories have actually been doing this for years. So there are several chemicals. These are gel chemicals and there are several colors. This episode of Six Rounds is going to be me testing the chemicals and seeing what I can do to get some of that coloring to, to replicate that, that, um, that antique finish. I've got a piece of cold roll steel. I'm going to polish that up and uh, start applying this chemical in the way that the, that the developer says to do it. 
uh, we're going to see what happens. And if it comes out and if I can manipulate it so that it looks like real color case, which he says you can, or they say you can, then I'm going to use that on that receiver. And I think, again, it's going to be, it's going to be uh, another opportunity for me to offer other services to, to other customers. All right. So let's get started on this. The first thing we're going to do is polish up that bar of steel. And then using his recommended techniques, we're going to try and make this thing look like it was color case finished. <clears throat> so sanding this bar down, there was a, some kind of a coating on it. I don't know what it was or what it is, but it's pretty dirty. <clears throat> and I had to take my, uh, my oscillating sander to get it all off. Uh, now I'm down to using a regular sandpaper that I use when I polish. So right now I'm just using some 180 trying to get the polish up. I don't know how similar or dissimilar the two metals are, but I'm hoping to get at least some idea how the coloring works on this, if it works at all. Again, I'm just trying to bring the luster up so that it's similar to the the 1905 receiver. Now I'm going to get up to the 320. Alright, let's put some chemical on. So I just finished polishing the steel and I just wiped it down with distilled water I wanted to get any residue cleaned off. Um, the steel is a little bit cold, so I'm going to heat it up just a little bit with a heat gun. I don't know if it makes a difference or not, but uh, it's pretty cold. Now I'm going to put the chemical on, and I'm going to put it on in the order that I have them laid out. And the idea is that I know what each chemical is and then what it looks like. I've never done this before. Let's see. How this works. So we're going to start out with this color using Q-tips. Instructions don't say how much to put on, just to put it on in a good amount. Now each of these chemicals are supposed to change the color of the steel below. So far this is pretty cool guys. I'll tell you what, it does have an odor. Q-tips, the greatest invention of man. So many uses. So many places to put it. These colors and these blends are all so much different. This is cool. This is so cool. Holy crap. And the last one. Alright, let's give this a few minutes to the set and then I'll bring you back. <laughs> so this is beyond my wildest imagination. This came out really good. I see a lot of potential in this, um, but let's get it cleaned up. The instructions say to clean this with a rag and, and water. I'm going to use distilled water again, but let's, let's see how this, <laughs> this comes out. This is Unbelievable. I can already see which chemicals or which batch of gel 
does what I'm looking for it to do. Um, this is this is really cool. <laughs> Let me get you all a close up of this. Okay, so I'm going to block these off um, with a black magic marker so that I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we're going to block these off so I can identify them to the chemicals themselves. Uh, the potential for this, I think, is pretty marvelous. Got a little bit of work to do still to understand it. Um, when this chemical gets put on that highly polished steel, I think it's going to take a little bit differently. But I can see at least at least three of these chemicals, um, or three of these gels, that are actually going to do what I'm asking them to do in order to color this, this receiver. It's funny, depending on which angle you look at this on, it really does change its color, it changes its dynamic. I think this is this is going to be this is going to be good stuff. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're trying to get to 5,000. We're really, really close, guys. Appreciate you guys all being here, and we'll see you in the next video.